Hello YouTube, it's Jose Serrano from Jose Serrano Special Vehicles. This video that shows you the destructive things of destroying seconds and space and time. It was a tall has boat, better only in this integrating you know, during the finish line in the race it was finished. The R4 Phantom Crash Test, the better only Jeep, the flipping BMW GT, the upside down pier, a tornado, be a tornado behind the house. The overpass collapsing, crushing the truck, caught on fire, and the tunnel terror. See episode 20, and again, and again, and again, and again, destroying second space and time several times before the final episode 20, 2023. I shall be done. This show time. <laughs> Much as a warning, life hangs in the balance. God! Human endeavor turns to chaos. And within seconds, nothing will ever be the same. Ever. I'm Ron Pitts. Get ready for some of the most hair-raising destruction ever captured on camera. Fireballs shoot high over Las Vegas when two neighboring propane factories go up in flames. And you'll be there the moment a motorcycle stunt rider's attempt to set a world record goes disastrously wrong. Sit back, buckle up, and hold on, because everything will be destroyed in seconds. Las Vegas. People here are accustomed to dazzling spectacles, but not like this one. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that thing, that is huge. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? Did you hear it? A couple watches from their balcony. That is insane. As 10 miles north of the Vegas Strip, explosions light up the night sky above two adjacent propane plants. An employee at the pro flame plant is transferring gas from a truck mounted 3,000 gallon tank when a static discharge ignites a fire. Flames quickly spread to the neighboring Amerigas plant, where thousands of five gallon barbecue propane tanks are stored. A stockpile of tanks explodes, and a massive 30,000 gallon tank vents gas that quickly catches fire causing a flamethrower effect. Flames reach heights of more than 150 feet. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that thing, that is huge. Oh my gosh, did you hear that, Mom? The situation here is so volatile that firefighters dare not enter the plant. 1,200 people are evacuated from the area. There are homes as close as 600 feet away. Interstate 15 is closed down. Fires burn for 21 hours before finally being extinguished. Daylight finds the surrounding neighborhoods littered with hundreds of burnt-out propane tanks. The tires of the tanker truck where it all began are reduced to steel belt skeletons. The accident causes between four and five million dollars in damage. 
Despite the massive destruction, both Amerigas and ProFlame are back in business within a day. The official cause of the incident is human error. The sole injury is to the ProFlame employee who is blamed for the incident. He suffers only minor burns and is fortunate to escape the scene with his life. Tornado warning is going off. Woodward, Iowa. An approaching funnel cloud catches the attention of a young storm chaser. There, dude. There's a tornado right there. Oh, my God. It's coming right at us. You know how many times I've tried to chase one down? Yeah. Okay, well, this here. I don't have to chase no more. Soon, his enthusiasm turns to fear. Let's go! And fear to panic. The strengthening tornado chews through a neighbor's house. Oh, there's a road. Get in the house. Yeah, get out of there. Hurry. Huh? It's a Category F2 twister with winds topping out at 157 miles per hour. The funnel cloud passes by just a few doors away. But the drama is just beginning. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! The tornado hits really close to home, touching down just a few houses away. Houses are gone. There's three houses that are gone. We need, we need to go see if anybody's in those. The cameraman and his friend hear the cries of a female survivor. Anybody help? The dog is okay. It's the owner who's bleeding from a minor gap. Is there anybody else down here? All right. Everybody accounted for? The devastation is widespread in this middle America neighborhood. Oh my God. In its wake, the tornado leaves uprooted trees, overturned cars, and 40 destroyed or badly damaged homes. Luckily, no serious injuries are reported. As for our storm chaser, he now has a great story about the time a tornado chased him down, quite literally, in his own backyard. Oh, my God! Paul Hepworth and his group of buddies are off-roading inside an 800-acre park in Hollister, California. The park known as Hollister Hills has about 24 miles of trails for thrill seekers to explore. Think I got some mud off? <laughs> yeah, dude. Paul and two of his pals are about to tackle a steep trail called Truck Hill. The trio rips up the hill, carving into the loose dirt, bumps, and ruts. They're halfway up when Paul's truck suddenly starts to lose traction. Uh, Paul, don't get stuck there, dude. Paul slams his brakes, but the truck slides. Oh, did you have brakes? Oh, shoot. Oh, no. On the way up the hill, the truck's drive shaft slams against rocks and ruts. The impact causes the drive shaft to snap, cutting power to the rear wheels. Paul slams the brakes, but the truck loses traction on the steep incline and loose dirt. As gravity takes over, the truck slides sideways, causing the vehicle to roll over and flip three times. Paul and both of his passengers walk away. Paul suffers only a broken finger, and his passengers minor cuts and bruises. Paul believes the outcome would have been much worse if it weren't for two things. His truck's roll bar and the fact that everyone on board was wearing a lap belt. 
As for Paul's $7,000 investment, the frame is bent and both axles are broken. Paul salvages what he can and scraps the rest. The body nets him only $13.73. Despite the loss, Paul and his buddies consider themselves lucky. Only six weeks earlier, another off-roader was killed on this same hill. Oh, did you have brakes? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Clay, 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 Clay! Burke County, North Carolina. Along Interstate 40, 11 miles of gridlock brings traffic to a standstill. Desperate travelers resort to using an on-ramp as an exit. The holdup at the front of the line? A tanker truck loaded with almost 9,000 gallons of gasoline loses control, rolls onto its side, slides into an overpass, and explodes. At first, firefighters try to douse the flames, but the heat becomes so intense, they are forced to pull back and let the fire burn itself out. Heat in excess of 1,500 degrees melts the steel and weakens the concrete on the overpass above. Then, after burning non-stop for over an hour, Tons of debris crush the truck, causing the remainder of the gasoline to ignite. In this time lapse of the five minutes leading up to the collapse, the overpass slowly sags, then crumbles. Sadly, the truck driver loses his life in the crash. No other casualties are reported. The collapse closes the interstate for a week, forcing 35,000 vehicles per day to jam a local highway used as a detour. It's another Sunday afternoon at the races in Marble Falls, Texas. All right, go in. And Todd Haas is ready to run his new alcohol-fueled flat-bottom drag boat. Todd takes the lead right from the start and accelerates to speeds over 160 miles per hour. As he crosses the finish line, it's a clean win. But seconds before he lets off the throttle, things get messy. Todd exceeds 160 miles per hour, the boat rocks from side to side. It catches the wind and barrel rolls into the water. Thankfully, Todd's breakaway capsule performs as designed. As the rest of the boat splinters into pieces, the reinforced pod stays intact. Boat fragments are spread over a 100-yard area of the lake. Seconds later, rescuers arrive. From the shore, Todd's concerned family looks on. It doesn't take long before the capsule is brought on board and the medics get their first glimpse as to the extent of Todd's injuries. As the rescue boat pulls in, Todd's family anxiously awaits. The medical team braces Todd's head to help minimize possible neck and spine injuries as the seasoned driver confirms his status. It's a hard day for drivers and their families, but after seeing this devastating crash, they're lucky it ended without serious injury. <laughs> Moscow, Russia. camera monitors fast-moving traffic in a tunnel beneath the city. Thousands of vehicles a day travel this throughway under the Yauza River. At 1.4 miles, it's one of the longest metropolitan traffic tunnels in Europe. But in the winter of 2005, it became one of the most dangerous. Drivers lose control when they hit patches of ice. The slip
slippery surface is caused by water leaking from the river above and freezing on the road in the minus 36 degree temperatures. On average, it takes nine times longer to stop on black ice versus dry pavement. Most of the leaks have been repaired, and accidents have been greatly reduced. It's absolute hell for the emergency services, since all of these crashes reportedly take place on the same day. It's Friday night at the Magic Valley Speedway in Twin Falls, Idaho. Hundreds wait anxiously as a motorcycle stuntman, nicknamed Flying Mike Brown, is about to perform a jump. He has to ride over a dirt embankment, go across grass, then onto a ramp before flying 151 feet onto a flatbed truck. If he pulls it off, it'll be a world record, but Mike is having trouble getting enough speed. How's it look, Mike? Now, in case you wonder what I'm doing, the grass is so soft out there, we're just checking it out right now because it's like riding in sand. Safety first, because God knows I want to hurt myself. I'm going to be back next year. I'll keep you guys posted. When I'm ready to rumble, I'll let you know. We'll get it on. After a few more test runs, it's finally showtime. approach, Mike hits a rut in the dirt, then has trouble gaining traction on the wet grass. As a result, he's going too slow. Fearing he could be cut in half if his body hits the lip of the flatbed, Mike lets go, falls off, and slams into a support under the truck. Mike's severely injured and unconscious. But thanks to his last second decision to let go, he's alive. The 36-year-old spends five weeks in a coma and undergoes multiple surgeries. As soon as he's released from the hospital, Mike retires from riding. Two miles off the coast of San Francisco, fishing boat, the contender, is taking on water. More than a dozen passengers are on board the rapidly sinking ship. The trouble began when the vessel's bilge pump stopped working. Now seawater is filling the boat's lowest compartment. As the stern sinks further, passengers rush to the bow. They try to stabilize the ship by acting as a counterweight. Two other boaters respond to the contender's distress call. A passenger on a nearby boat catches the frightening ordeal on video. They gotta get off the fast. They really gotta get off the fast. I'd start jumping ship. The contender's passengers can no longer hang on. One by one, they slide off into the rough, frigid water. By now, all of her passengers and crew are in the water. With 50 degree water and the windy conditions, rescuers must get people out of the sea before hypothermia sets in. The survivors are scattered by the swells, complicating the rescue. Over here! Hey! There's one guy over there. Over there by the boat, there's a guy floating. One by one, each is pulled from the sea. One right there! One on the boat! On the raft! Get that guy right on the boat! Coast Guard arrives, the 
contender itself is almost completely sunk. Sadly, the Coast Guard is unable to save the life of one of the passengers. Thanks to the Good Samaritans, all the other passengers were pulled to safety. As for the contender, it's a $150,000 loss. I'm Ron Pitts, and we'll see you next time on Destroyed in Seconds. so much as a warning, life hangs in the balance. Human endeavor turns to chaos. And within seconds, nothing will ever be the same. Ever. I'm Ron Pitts. My team has put together some of the most unbelievable moments of destruction ever caught on camera. You'll see an entire neighborhood reduced to ash by an explosive train collision. And watch a race car driver endure a violent crash that flips him ten times across the track. No situation is without risk, no outcome predictable when things are destroyed in seconds. Destruction cuts across Texarkana, Arkansas. Acres of charred land. Homes reduced to cinders. Lives changed forever. The drama begins four hours earlier. The fire department is staging right now. Police receive word that a freight train has derailed. An officer responds to the rail yard to investigate. I've got some kind of chemical smell. I'm backing up. It's slowly drifting further south. The odor is a bad sign. It means the derailed train probably contains volatile chemicals and could result in a toxic cloud or worse. We just had a huge explosion. Joe 9, you might want to back your unit up. Uh, we've got a massive fire out here. All the officers that responded to this need to back up out of the way. The fire department's even backing up. Get your out of my way. We can get the hell up out of here. scope of the disaster is revealed. Fires still burn throughout the rail yard, which now looks more like a war zone. In addition to the train cars, two homes and several vehicles are destroyed. Plumes of smoke tower over this small town on the Texas-Arkansas border. 
Sadly, a woman in one of the homes loses her life in the initial explosion. The inferno is triggered when a freight train rams into a tanker car filled with liquid propane. In the collision, the tanker car explodes, spreading the fire. Total damages are estimated at $2.4 million. The day Paul McDonald turned 18, he bought his first motorcycle. He taught himself how to do wheelies, then kept on pushing the limits. McDonald's riding up to San Francisco to visit his mother. On his way there, he amuses himself and a friend who's taking the video by performing a few stunts. These are all tricks that Paul's very familiar with. Like a knack-knack, where he rides with both feet planted on the same side of the motorcycle while performing a wheelie. his knack-knack, Paul's bike begins to wobble, and he loses control. He hits the blacktop at close to 60 miles per hour, rolls several times, and slides down the road. His bike slams into a parked car. The nearly 400-pound machine bounces off and hits Paul in the head as he slides by. Paul survives the crash, but breaks several bones, including his back. He completely recovers. Paul is certain that without his head-to-toe safety gear, he would be dead. Lexington, Ohio. Some of the fastest cars in the Midwest racing the annual Gears Classic at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. With speeds reaching 150 miles an hour, GT race cars tear through the two-and-a-half-mile track for nearly three hours. With only four minutes to go in the race, driver Joey Hand battles to maintain his lead. The intensity thickens from turn to turn, where the slightest move can have extreme consequences. The impact sends Joey onto the grass. He hits a berm, launching his 2,600-pound race. The car twists, turns, and flips an incredible 10 times back across the track. Then crash lands upside down 150 feet away. from inside the car that hit him. It's one of the worst crashes in the track's history, and the crowd is stunned. Then, the second most incredible sight of the afternoon. Joey crawls from the wreck with only a few bruises. Thanks to his padded roll cage and a good measure of luck, Joey is back at the track one week later.
In 1988, Japanese and U.S. scientists gather in the New Mexico desert to perform an experiment. They plan to crash an F-4 Phantom jet, traveling at 480 miles per hour, into a 12-foot thick concrete wall, then measure the impact force. They hope to understand how to design concrete structures that will withstand such a calamity. Two-stage rockets propel the aircraft down a 300-foot long sled track. The concrete wall is floating on air bearings, which allow it to move. High-speed photography helps scientists determine the crush behavior of the aircraft. Both wingtips and the tail are shredded off as the rest of the Phantom disintegrates. When scientists inspect the crash site, only a few recognizable pieces remain. The concrete wall bears the impact scar of the aircraft. Instruments show it moved a total of six feet when struck by the jet. Using this data, engineers learn new ways to reinforce critical concrete structures. A five alarm fire breaks out in an abandoned building in San Jose, California. Firefighters battle the blaze from the street, while inside other crews search for transients that may be trapped in the building. No prior warning, one of the exterior brick walls collapses. Pinning a firefighter beneath the rubble. There's somebody hurt. Fire crews race to rescue one of their fallen brothers. The fate of the firefighters inside the building is still unknown. A second firefighter is injured by flaming debris. Crews continue to battle the blaze. Finally, the search and rescue team reappears, unhurt and positive that the building was empty before the blaze. The firefighter buried beneath the rubble of the wall is finally freed and taken to a nearby hospital. He's treated for minor injuries. The blaze continues for several hours into the night. The exact cause is never determined. Considering the firefighter's close proximity to the burning building, it's fortunate so few were injured when the wall came tumbling down. One hundred and twenty miles off the coast of Virginia, the crew of the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Enterprise carries out exercises. Pilots flying EA-6B Prowlers and S-3 Vikings hone their takeoff and landing techniques throughout the day and into the night, where a Navy pilot's skill is pushed to the edge. With limited visual cues, pilots are forced to rely mainly on instruments. Roger ball, 27 knots. Wind 210 at 8 altimeter, 290. But even the best instruments are no match for a dangerous obstacle. 5612 pilot. pilot of the Prowler is completely unaware that a Viking jet has been moved into his landing pad. Report initial. By the time he sees it, it's too late. The Prowler clips the tail of the Viking. Both planes burst into flames. 
momentum carries the prowler across the deck and over the side. The next morning, the extent of the disaster becomes clear. The crew of the Viking survives. Sadly, the four crewmen inside the prowler are killed. The disaster leads the Navy to adopt new safety procedures for night landings. Sherman Reservoir in the mountains on a Memorial Day weekend. Groups of campers enjoy life in the great outdoors. <laughs> Suddenly, all eyes are on an adventure-seeking off-roader. He's giving the new suspension on his 4x4 a workout. He's gonna go off if he keeps down. But suddenly finds himself stuck at the edge of a 50 foot drop. This guy is history. Back up. One wheel is hanging over the edge of the cliff. His front left tire is off. Wow. The other three wheels are on sandy soil and loose gravel. Dude, you ought to see this. As the driver takes a time out to contemplate his strategy, Campers on the ground have put together a plan B. Hey, uh, get the truck ready and someone get the truck down there because that guy rolls. We're going to have to get over there and help really quick. The driver tries to reverse his luck by backing out. It's like crumbling as he's backing out over it. But as he makes his move, the situation goes from bad to worse. He's in a little bit of a spot. With every rollover, the driver endures rocks and boulders coming in through the side windows and thin vinyl bikini top. Miraculously, the driver walks away with minor scrapes on his head and on one arm. And campers come off the mountain with a great story. And some amazing video. For several days, winds reaching up to 70 miles per hour whip across the port of Carrico. As night falls, heavy tides continue to batter the port. Last-minute ferries dock in hopes of avoiding the heavy surf. The floating pier begins to take on water. Police and emergency crews quickly evacuate all ferry passengers. can only watch as the massive structure becomes unhitched from the shore and capsized. After days of heavy surf, the pier suffers a ruptured ballast tank, one of 16 designed to keep it balanced. As a result, the pier's lounge begins to flood. Hitched to the shore by steel cables, the pier's weight becomes too much, snapping free. The unbalanced pier turns upside down and quickly submerges. only minutes to totally destroy the large pier. Police and emergency crews completed a full evacuation. It's suspected that the surging tide was simply too much for a floating pier not secured to the ground by poles. An 
investigation into the cause of the disaster is still being conducted. I'm Ron Pitts, and we'll see you next time on Destroyed in Seconds. The most intense nightmare that the earth tumbles upside down because the too much wave of a surf. Now, let's do a space and time before I end this video.
all right before i end this video it's almost 2023 i almost finished season two so i'm free i can pause any video anything i want if i think you can request the video if i like i'll let you know we'll see you next time of jose serrano special vehicles